welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I'll be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest, Elizabeth Hansen, is an abstract painter who uses the colors, patterns, and textures found in nature to create her beautifully colorful artwork. She is here to demonstrate her layering approach to acrylic painting. So welcome, Elizabeth. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Oh, you're very welcome. So tell us a little bit about how you became involved in art. What is your background? Um, well, I have a fairly deep background in art. My mother trained me a lot, but then, you know, through high school and college, I found that it was something I really enjoyed doing and mm -hmm. learned a lot about the world through doing it and following it. And so I majored in art and um, graduated from Berkeley in art. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. And what is what are some of your inspirations? Um, my inspirations come uh, very largely from uh, my own personal inner experiences a lot, mm. um, my dream life especially, and um, the ideas that that I uncover in finding, unpacking those dreams and those feelings and experiences that I have um, sort of create a feedback loop and I find that the ideas themselves then start to, you know, intrigue me right. and lead me further. Um, and uh, my current work now is, is like you say, largely um, the textures and patterns that um, I've focused a lot of energy on and um, coming from nature. Um, partly from my experiences in doing a lot of concentrating on creating planting plans, which I have done oh, over so the last... So you're a landscape architect. Right. So oh, I excellent. had done landscape architecture for the last 30 years, and so that sort of created another layer of the feedback loop right. that, so that allowed makes sense. me to... I can see that in your patterning. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So... You have a very, very interesting color palette and choices and how you use them. Tell us a little bit about how you decide which colors you use. Yeah, well, that's been one of the most interesting things for me is when I first started painting in my years at Berkeley, I did not mix colors at all. Oh. I used colors straight from the palette and was right. very interested in, you know, the modern chemistry of colors and what kind of colors those produced. Right. And now I've moved um, in the last while, moved very deeply into this idea of the mixtures of colors. Right. And um, I spent a lot of time um, really trying to get the color that I want exactly. Right. And um, like you said, that I've used these. Um, color wheels and chips that I pick up when I know I'm looking for a certain tint, I'll pick up a chip. And these um, help me to really refine down exactly what the tone is that I want to create the optical effect right. um, on the painting surface. And then, of course, I don't use these paints. <laughs> so is that from like a painting store? Yeah. So yeah. those are not like the Pantone color charts? No, no. I would love to have a Pantone right. color wheel. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I just use these to sort of get in the, in the vicinity of the right. color that I want because I do, like you say, work in layers. And so I'm looking usually for the next color, right? right. And, and what pattern is that going to be to layer on top? And, and the layering, because it's layering, you have to decide with, with each color, is it going to be a transparent layer or a semi-transparent layer? Or is it going to be a co color that completely covers what it's on top of? And so there's a lot of decisions right. there. Well, you brought some images that show this process. So let's take a look at those now, and you can describe the process in more detail. Right. Yeah, so this is a painting that um, I uh, started um, 
uh, and uh, chose to make it in a dual panel. Um, mm -hmm. I was really interested in um, working uh, in a uh, uh, modality that allowed me to put multiple panels of color and texture together and work with them um, as groups. Um, I had before this mo worked mainly as like a single panel, you know, uh, right. that would build up a layer. And I was interested in um, increasing the co complexity of the composition, basically. So I developed these um, sort of uh, stacking modules. And this would be basically the uh, primer layer is the color um, on each of them, which is... Uh, the orange and the turquoise layer, right. and then the secondary layer is the colors of the pa of the individual panels that I wanted to stack, and that they would be the first layer that uh, that uh, provided the base. And then here you see um, my uh, beginning to uh, develop the different panels, and the lowest panels. Um, on each of them is uh, intended to sort of ground your eye and ground the picture right. into the uh, panel. The second panel up from the ground is, is meant to uh, sort of give a, a sense of dispersion so that the, you start to spread out from this sort of vertically ascending um, composition. The third panels there are meant to um, give a sense of directionality and the fourth and fifth panels sort of even out the composition. So tell us a little bit about how you chose the colors one on top of each other. Let's take well, a look it's, at it's a, it, it is the time consuming and really completely joyful part of the right. process, um, which is that you, I really like to, in these particular paintings, wanted to work for something quite intense. So um, I wasn't looking for a muted palette in the slightest. Right. Um, and so I you know, would mix the colors and try to get the colors talking to each other across the panels um, so that you get a certain number of reds on the right-hand side to balance the orange on the right and then a certain amount of blues and blue-greens on the left to balance the overall color. Yeah, that's really... Very interesting. And why did you call it Blackfield Totem? Um, Blackfield Totem was a, a title that I gave it after I was um, able to um, start painting at my new house on Blackfield Drive. Uh, and um, I chose those colors actually for my uh, house. Oh, and nice. I wanted to make these paintings as sort of a um, a ritual, you might say, of moving into a new place and wanting to establish myself there and um, create um, some kind of a complex um, interaction with my environment that I Beautiful. wanted to make. Well, you have a demonstration of how you create this layering process. Let's take a look at what you have yeah, here. Yeah, and so I just thought I would show you some of the types of um, um, ways that in addition to the color wheel, I do what most artists do, which is create out of all their uh, paint samples and paint opportunities sheets so that you get tints and all that you can tell what you want to do. Do you use and one for each painting? Is that how me? it works? Do you use one of those sheets as the basis for a painting? Uh, I, use the, I use them to find the colors that I want to use in the layering process. And um, so basically my sheets are, uh, are, these are part of the process. For instance, when I was painting Blackfield Totem, I would um, uh, keep small pieces of board like this on the side that I would have maybe 15 or 20 of these going at once and wow. developing colors as I was using them in the Blackfield and putting them on these just sort of as a, a a secondary kind of creative process, and um, and they uh, ended up some of them speaking to each other, and so I brought a couple along that I thought um, I brought a few along that I thought I would show you how I 
might try to make these two pieces, which uh, had seemed to start talking to each other and might be a pair in some way, um, that they might go together. And so I'm very fond of these stippling brushes. And They're they flat. are basically a, a brush that, that um, can be used in a variety of ways. And um, I thought that I would uh, put them with uh, some paints. I'm basically an acrylic painter, although I use a wide variety of materials uh, in addition to acrylics um, in the layering process. But typically, I'm uh, basically doing uh, acrylics. Um, and so I like this uh, process of mixing the color. Um, I kind of decided ahead of time that I would use uh, a yellow tone uh, and a rather opaque one with the stippling brush. And these are all kinds of decisions that I make at the time uh, of the painting. Um, but that I've made ahead of time, you know, here. So you don't generally have a plan for the next step? I don't usually, no. I wait until whatever color has gone down and then, um, you know, look at it and think about it and think where I want it to go. And um, so what I do here is I mix the color and I did want a rather opaque color, so I have mixed a lot of white into it. Um, and these stippling brushes are great because you can do all kinds of textures with them. But in this case, I've pre-wet it and then dried it off quite a bit um, so that there's not uh, any you know, loose water. And then sort of twist it around um, to get it on the tips, just on the tips of the brush. And I use it to um, go in and make a pattern back into, and again, this is, it's, it's all very, basically very spontaneous. It's not like that I have some premeditated idea about what the long-term look of this is gonna be. Um, but I know that what I'm working on is trying to bring these two into some kind of interesting harmony which is not something, like I say, I started out necessarily doing, right. but, but that is the sort of task that evolved in the process of, of creating them. And what I had sort of, um, in looking at this one, had sort of decided um, another, uh, one of the, my f very favorite things to use are uh, oil pastels, and I use many different brands and oil sticks all the way from small ones to big ones, you know. But um, so I thought that it would make an interesting pa pattern in, um, in this uh, mate, so to speak. And um, so I was going to do a um, curvilinear pattern into the bright yellow space that would not necessarily be, you know, in any kind of order, but would tie these figures together. Um, And so, like you see, it, it, it's basically a very spontaneous method. Yeah. Um, and the end is never clearly in sight. <laughs> I was going but, to say, how close to the end are you? But it's spontaneous enough that you can, um, you know, constantly be making changes and additions. Um, So I think that's good for that one. And then what you know typically I'll do is I'll sit and let that go for a day, you know, and just see, okay, now what, what might be the next step? And a lot of it is moving the media back and forth so that it balances out. I'm looking for some kind of harmonious whole. And the intent you know. is to hang them together. Pardon me? The intent is to hang them together? Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, at the beginning, I don't know that these are going to go together, but once I've sort of recognized that they do go together, then um, I do try to present them in a way that they um, 
work best for themselves, and I have a couple different ways of, of doing them. One is to just have them actually matted together, and that works out very well. I have a lot of pieces that have, you know, multiple panels um, well, being shown together. Let's take a look at some of the images that you brought of the completed paintings now. Okay. Well, this one's interesting. Fall Cauldron, Pot of Gold. Tell us about that one. Well, that's um, one of the ones that uh, is not sort of the spontaneously created small ones. It's uh, one of my more intentional pieces, and I think the next few are in that category. They're um, paintings that um, I had basically a vision for, and um, not to the very last detail in the slightest, but uh, this one was definitely inspired by fall colors and the shapes of fall leaves. Um, which I sort of translated into a geometrical motif um, in the way that leaves are pointed yes. and that just seemed to translate into that. But it's also uh, showing something which is uh, something I do uh, follow and I'm interested in is planetary motion. And so it's um, got some somewhat eclipsing circles there of some kind. Yeah, very nice. Uh, and this is uh, one, again, of an intentional series that I did uh, that's uh, um, not unlike the format of the uh, Blackfield Totem, but it's one of a series of four that is uh, based on the elements. And so this is the element of fire. and. Um, so these aren't necessarily dream-oriented. Uh, They're an attempt to create a, an image that that gives the uh, audience a sense, or you know, the viewer a uh, sense of the element itself. So this one is fire, and I believe we have one of um, water, um, and this one has a lot of different uh, different actions. If you see the detail of the different kinds of water, we have water dripping, and we have water waves, and we have water vortexes, that all kind of subsumed in this sort of deep colors of water. And still with a geometric pattern, though, as well. Yes, there is still geometric pattern. Um, this one has two very elongated uh, triangles that uh, the dripping one falls downward, and the wave pattern uh, pushes upward, and so it is. There's there's a balance there. I have a feeling about geometric f shapes, and they are definitely related to the created world to me. So they oh, always, yes. very often, underlie the structures of my um, paintings. And you can really see that here. And this one, yes. this is the Earth. And um, I loved painting this painting because I was able to use some. Uh, raw ochre pigments That's that I beautiful. had collected years ago from Provence, which is uh, where the best pigments right. of oil painting have come from, and I chose the square because that's the typical symbol so that's associated a, with Earth. This is oil painting, then? No, no. it's it's the um, it's the raw pigments mixed oh. with cold wax, Interesting. and it's six different. Uh, colors of the pigments. I did not mix them. I kept them separate. So you can see they they uh, evolve from a darker color at the bottom to the lightest ochre at the top. They're all considered ochres, but they are very different colors, and uh, they probably ring bells to some people because they would be the very common colors in Renaissance painting right. and um, a lot of early oil painting. Um, so this is a, one of the intentional pieces also. This was uh, definitely a early um, uh, attempt to make a, a nature-based painting. This was definitely a, a feeling for nature that I have that includes like the rivulets of water and the movement and, and colors of vegetation. It feels very jungly to me, yes. this one. Um, but I have this repetitious pattern in this, and, and quite a few of my pieces use this kind of pattern. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's meant to um, 
sort of evoke this sense of a vibratory universe where uh, things are all very interconnected and mm. that it presents itself as, as a whole um, and it moves in some, in some sense uh, throughout all space. And so it moves into some kind of a realm that to me is moving sort of a little bit outside the material uh, world and moving into. And this is another one that has a, a vibration of, and I call it cherry blossom, it has that sense of, of, of almost this time of year really where the, the colors and the mood is very um, um, reminiscent of, of, uh, of a natural event, but it's presented in a way to me that is, um, it's, it's like the existence of, of the unseen world that precedes or antecedes somehow our sense of actually seeing a cherry blossom. That, it, that, that this kind of space or colors and patterns are part of our perception that precedes abstracting out an object. And this is actually a recent piece that um, is moving out of that grid format and into a much more curvilinear um, yes. kind of space, trying to break, break through that kind of yeah, rigidity. Some of them are coloring out of the lines now. Oh yes, we're coloring <laughs> out of the lines. Yes, it's wildly breaking free along the edges around here. And, and that's where a lot of the, um, of the evolution of, of my work is, is moving into this um, much more curvilinear space. And this one is based around a basic vortex uh, shape. Um, and uh, that's a shape and, and a compositional um, uh, device, I guess you would say, that I'm really interested in now and, and it's an developing more. an interesting title, too. Yeah, well, I just, it got so intensely um, about these little S's and the way <laughs> that everything, I mean, I, I follow physics as a strict layman, but it just seemed to me that the way it was so tightly packed and everything was talking to everything in there that it, um, it's, it just evoked the title of string theory to me. And this one is, is again, it's a, it's a small panel that was developed uh, not unlike the ones I was demonstrating. It's um, a piece that was uh, developed while I was doing others, but it was one that really um, stood out by itself. It was, it was a, a strong piece that felt like there was enough narrative and story going on um, inside it as a standalone piece, and so it has uh, um, mm -hmm. stood alone. I got to sell that one last year, along with this one, which was really nice. Richard. Um, wow. Yeah, orchard and like uh, the pinks. Yeah, this one was really um, again just a piece that just uh, seemed to evolve as a result of of just working layer after layer. Um, and uh, actually, my framer uh, sort of named this one. To okay. him, it was orchard. That looks like an orchard. Interesting. <laughs> and. Um, so I went with that. That seemed like a good, uh, a good interpretation. I was very glad to have someone else's input on um, what it is they saw. Uh, this, and this is another one of these um, smaller panels. It's a standalone um, ring of fire, and um, Again, it was developed as a as a uh, a piece to explore the different colors and textures that were uh, just sort of emanating from me. Right, I can see the stippling pattern on this one, and how many different layers of color are actually underneath that mm -hmm. light blue. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then these are two panels that uh, this. I think there's a few here now that uh, show where the panels have um, teamed up. Right. Yeah, and they, um, they just seem to make a better statement or, or have a more complex story uh, somehow by uh, being um, teamed up. And uh, that title is um, 
taken from a book that, that discusses this idea of, of there being this uh, sort of evolving, incessant creativity of the universe that um, allows the, uh, the sort of uh, transcendent or transcendental realm to um, be constantly churning and bringing new ideas and new people. And this is another set that I thought was just an incredible uh, juxtaposition, but I read quite a bit about Minoan culture, and when I saw these two, and they just was, one is the wave pattern on top that just looks like the ocean that surrounds uh, Crete, and then the bottom is this just incredibly jeweled uh, set of colors, right. and you put them together, and it just, to me, it was really just like top. this Cretan uh, experience. And these are two smaller ones that you then matted and framed, correct? Yes, yes, and so, so those ones have been matted and framed, and then this one here is another way that I present these, which is to mount them on a... Um, this on is a, a board. On, a, on the, uh, yes, plywood or birch, uh, box mounts, um, people paint on these. I mount them on these. I right. do paint them with a, a background color. Um, this one needs a little help on the glue, but it's This good. looks great. So tell us briefly where people can see your work. Um, right now I'm showing at the Gallery House in Palo Alto. In Palo Alto? Yeah, on California Avenue. And will you be part of the Silicon Valley Open Studios this I year? I will. Excellent. At the Gallery House. Yes, at the Gallery House. I'll be doing it there. Um, I think my work will be up for all three weekends, and I Excellent. should be there. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, so that's on California Avenue. It's a really wonderful gallery. A lot of Silicon Valley Open Studios artists show there. Yes, yes. Right. It's a great group. Well, thank you so much for being on Talk Art. This has been a wonderful experience. Thank you very much. It yeah. was great.